It's one of those questions that sounds simple until you really think about it. We've seen evolution create lions, tigers, saber-tooths, even bears the size of small cars. So why has it never produced a truly giant dog? And before you say it, no, bears aren't just big dogs. I got a ton of comments like that on my last video. Bears are the big dogs. Bears filled the dog niche. Look, I get the confusion. They've got fur, claws, walk on four legs, and occasionally stand up to scare the hell out of people. But dogs and bears split over 50 million years ago. They're more like distant cousins who haven't talked since the Pliocene. Bears evolved into bulky, slow-moving omnivores built for solitude and stuffing their face with whatever they can find. Dogs? Well, they stayed lean, social, and built to run down prey. Two completely different toolkits. Before we can ask why giant dogs don't exist, we need to be clear about what we're actually talking about. Because wolves are already big by dog standards. Great Danes and Mastiffs push even further in captivity. But that's still a far cry from something like a tiger or a grizzly. So let's set the bar. When we say giant dog, we're talking about a predator that rivals the biggest terrestrial carnivores. Something in the 300 to 600 kilogram range. Not just tall or long-legged, but heavy, muscular, and powerful enough to take down massive prey on its own. And most importantly, still dog-shaped. That means no bear-like lumbering, no sloth-like build. We're talking about a scaled-up canid. Long-legged, deep-chested, built for movement. Not a tank, but a machine. The concept is strange because it's never happened. But biologically, it's not impossible. So why didn't evolution take us there? When it comes to body mass and raw size, bears won the evolutionary lottery, at least in the northern hemisphere. They didn't get there by accident. They filled a niche that dogs were never built to compete in. See, bears aren't specialized hunters. They're opportunists. A bear will eat roots, berries, insects, fish, carrion, young animals, even garbage, whatever gives the most energy for the least effort. That kind of broad, calorie-rich diet makes it much easier to sustain a large body. Dogs, on the other hand, are predators first. Their whole system is built around chasing, exhausting, and tearing down moving prey. Well, that's energy intensive, and the bigger you are, the more energy you burn per kill. At a certain point, the cost outweighs the payoff, especially if you're hunting in a pack and splitting the meat. Bears also benefit from being solitary. One animal controls its own territory, its own resources. A dog, especially a giant one, would need not just space for itself, but for the whole pack, and enough prey to feed all of them. That's a logistical nightmare at large scale. And then there's the way bears move. They're not fast, but they're powerful. Their limbs are built for strength and weight-bearing, not endurance. That makes them perfect for a sit-and-eat lifestyle, but not for long-distance pursuit. Dogs never gave up their runner's frame, which doesn't scale up nearly as well for bulk. So it's not just that bears happened to get big, it's that their body plan and lifestyle made it viable to get big. Now let's look at the dogs themselves. Not just the niche they missed, but the reasons their own biology held them back. At first glance, it seems like size should be an advantage. Bigger predators can take down larger prey, defend kills from scavengers, and survive longer without food. But evolution doesn't work in straight lines. It works through trade-offs. And when it comes to canids, the trade-offs start stacking up fast once you go beyond wolf size. For starters, dogs are built for endurance, not power. They rely on long limbs, efficient lungs, and stamina. All great for chasing prey over long distances, but those traits don't scale up well. As body mass increases, limb stress increases even faster. At a certain size, a long-legged, deep-chested build becomes a liability. The joints take too much impact. The spine starts to limit speed and agility. You can't just take a wolf and supersize it. The frame starts to collapse under its own weight. Then there's the metabolism. Larger animals burn more calories in absolute terms, even if they're slightly more efficient per unit of weight. For a dog to be massive and still chase prey, it would need huge amounts of energy. 
and a way to get that energy regularly. But most wild ecosystems can't support a 400 kilo pack hunter that needs fresh meat every few days, especially not if it's part of a group. Because remember, dogs don't hunt alone. They evolved as cooperative predators. They need space not just for one big animal, but for multiple. That means more mouths to feed, more competition within the group, and even more pressure on the environment. This makes it almost impossible for a pack of giant dogs to survive long-term without quickly wiping out their own food sources. On top of that, canids don't have the anatomical weapons to make size worth it. They don't have the ambush power of a big cat. They don't have retractable claws, strong forearms, or a crushing bite like a hyena. Their main tools are their numbers and their ability to wear prey down. Scaling up doesn't enhance that strategy, it weakens it. So when you put all of that together, the structural limits, the energy demands, the group dynamics, and the lack of built-in weapons, you start to see the ceiling. Dogs can be large, but only up to a point. Beyond that, their entire strategy breaks down. So if modern dogs are capped by their own design, did anything like a giant dog ever exist? The short answer is almost. Back in the Miocene and early Pliocene, nature did experiment with large dog-like predators. And the closest it got to a true giant wasn't technically a dog at all. It was a bear dog. These were the Amphicyanids, a family of carnivores that looked like someone had fused a bear and a wolf in the same body. Some of them were small, but others, like Amphicyon ingans, reached 300 kilos or more. That's polar bear size, with crushing jaws and strong limbs. They weren't true canids, but they occupied a similar ecological space, active hunters that could also scavenge or overpower other predators. In North America, you also had giant bone-crushing dogs, like Epicyon haydeni, a true canid and one of the largest ever to live. It may have reached 170 kilos, with a skull built to crack bones and tear flesh. Think of it as the canid world's closest answer to a lion-bear hybrid. These animals weren't just big, they were dominant. For a while, they were some of the top predators in their ecosystems. But none of them lasted. So what happened? Climate change, shifting ecosystems, and competition from more specialized predators, especially big cats, gradually pushed them out. As forests gave way to open grasslands, the hunting game changed. Speed, stealth, and efficiency started to matter more than brute force. Cats adapted better. Bears diversified. The big dogs faded out. And the traits that made them impressive – size, power, generalist diets – became weaknesses in the long run. They needed a lot of food, a lot of territory, and couldn't adapt quickly when prey populations crashed or new competitors showed up. Nature tried the giant dog idea but it just didn't stick. Let's say nature wanted to take another shot at a bear-sized dog. What would need to happen? First off, the environment would have to change. A lot. You'd need an ecosystem with huge prey, low competition, and room for a large-bodied predator to evolve slowly over time. Somewhere with minimal pressure from big cats, limited human interference, and enough food to fuel a 300-kilo carnivore or at least an omnivore with a strong carnivorous lean. You'd also need a shift in hunting strategy. A giant pack-hunting canid just isn't suitable, especially at that size. So the evolution would have to go solo, or at least semi-solitary, something more like a jaguar than a wolf. Maybe it hunts opportunistically, ambushes prey when it can, and scavenges the rest of the time. It might even lean into omnivory, picking up bear-like habits just to make that size viable. Physically, it wouldn't look like a scaled-up husky. More likely, you get something lower to the ground, more muscular, with a shorter snout and a stronger bite. Think deep chest, powerful limbs, thick neck, a mix between a direwolf and a spotted hyena, with the mass of a grizzly and the attitude of a wolverine. But even then, it would take millions of years, and that's if nothing gets in the way. And today, the obstacles are massive. Shrinking wild spaces, human pressure on prey populations, and a world already full of top-tier carnivores. There's just no open niche left for something like that to develop. Not naturally. 
Could we create something similar through selective breeding or genetic engineering? Probably. But that wouldn't be evolution. That would be us playing zookeeper. So, unless something major changes, the giant dog remains a what-if. Possible in theory, but unlikely in the real world we've built. In the world of predators, size isn't just about strength. It's about strategy. And for dogs, getting massive would have meant giving up everything that made them successful in the first place. They weren't built to overpower prey with raw force. They were built to outlast it, to work in teams, and to adapt across every kind of landscape on Earth. And that formula works, just not at 500 kilos. So maybe the real question isn't why didn't dogs get bigger, but why did they thrive without needing to? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.